Hey guys, so in the last video, we saw all about how to persist data with Solana. And mainly, we were taking a look at how you create an account, and then you basically present your account to a program that lives on the Solana chain, and it will change the state of your account. And we saw all that in the last video, and it was in this math stuff example here. Now, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to build on that example math stuff, but we're going to do things a little bit differently. So... You saw last time when we ran this, if we dive back into our client here and we take a look at this bottom one here where we're pinging the program, as you've seen before, we've been using no instruction data. So we're just allocating a zero, like nothing there. There's no particular special instructions. And so obviously up in our Rust code, you can see that this is completely ignored, right? It even warns us. So we're gonna finally see how to use this field and get some specific instructions into your program so it's not just like one linear thing. All right, so to do that, what I've done here is I basically just copied the math stuff folder into advanced math. And um, advanced math is structured exactly the same. We've even got the same CICD script. We've got a similar looking package JSON. And we've also got our same setup with the client and then our Rust programs here. Except notice, instead of having two different math problems or math operations. We just have one Solana program called Calculator. So I've just gone ahead and skipped ahead here and I've copied my cargo toml from the last example from math stuff, same exact thing. And then we also copied in the librs file and made just a couple quick changes and we'll talk about them. So if you look at the original librs, our struct was math stuff sum, and then we just had sum as that u32. Here, we actually call a calculator, and we're going to just have value. So it's a little bit more neutral. Um, and then, as you can see, we also added, you know, this crate import here from the calculator module we're about to write. And you can see the instruction struct that we're going to be using. So this is obviously coming up red right now. What we got to do is just go ahead and create that calculator.rs file. And let's go ahead and start building this thing out. But before we do that, real quick, I just want to talk about what we're going to be doing in LibRS. So we've saw this before, right? We've got the account information. Make sure that it's owned by the program ID. This time, our object is called calculator instead. And then down here, we're doing the same process. Try from slice to try to get that instruction data. And then we take the value, and we're going to just run this evaluate method on the value serialize it back to what just like we've seen before and then the value is now is going to be our message so bear with me if you don't know what some of this means like what are we doing here what are we doing here it's going to become apparent i just wanted to show you since we copied this right now what's different but everything from here upward is exactly the same this is new and then we're going to write this and this is the same that we saw before anyway so let's go back to calculator and now let's write this thing and the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use that borscht crate because we're going to be doing some borscht stuff in here. So here we're going to need that annotation again because we're going to be using a struct. So I'm going to copy the annotation in. Obviously, that's where we're going to be using borscht. And we're going to make this struct, you guessed it, calculator instructions, just like you saw on the front page here in librs. And I'll close this one out so I don't get confused. So we're going to create this struct right here. And this struct is really going to represent what we're going to be doing to the value that's represented in this struct. So consider this the account right here, right? Each account is a calculator account. It has a value. And based on the instructions, we're going to do something to that value. So just for a simple example, we're going to represent everything with digits. But the idea is they're going to be specific instructions. Operation. And that's going to be what is the operation that we're going to do to the value. Make it a U32. And then the operating value. So if it's like add or subtract, like what are we going to add to it? What are we going to subtract from it? So what's the operating value? Nice. And then we're going to implement this struct just to make life easier here. And we're going to add a nice method that's going to help us evaluate what it is that's going on here.
So as you can see, all we've really done is define this evaluate function to say, hey, if we get a one here, add. If we get a two here, do subtraction. If we get a three, do multiplication. And if we get anything else, reset this value back to zero. Simple enough, right? So as you can see, this struct represents two pieces of instruction data that we're gonna need. So what to do and what to do it by. And we can obviously build on this. This is a simple example, and we're just going to see it in practice. And so now going back to this libRS, we can see exactly what those things mean, what these unknowns mean. So we're going to try to get that struct from the slice, just like we did with the accounts value, with the accounts data. And then we're going to take that calculator instructions, that calculator object, and just run this evaluate on the value. And that is going to, of course, give us the new value, which we will then serialize into the account and save as the new state. Okay, so that's all we need for our smart contract, for our program. If we flip back to our client here, this is where we're gonna have to make some changes. So starting with math, let's take a look at what's going on with math. So I made a couple initial changes to this class. Um, first things first, nothing has changed all the way through down to here, right? So everything above ping the program is exactly the same as we saw in the last video. We're still gonna go through, connect to the DevNet. We're still gonna get that local account from the key pair. We're still gonna get the program that we're looking for. This time it's gonna be the calculator.so. And then we're still gonna configure a client account, again with a seed, test one. And we can use the same seed kind of flipping that we did last video to check different values and stuff, which we'll see in the example. And then down below when we do ping program, here's where things get a little different. So obviously now our ping program is taking new arguments. So we've got operation and operating value. And they're both numbers, which of course makes sense because we saw that they were U32s in our instruction struct, which I'm going to pull back out just for reference here. So I'm going to keep this open. And then, yeah, so like I said, two U32s. And what we want to do with those U32s is we want to create the calculator instructions. And this is going to be of type buffer. And now I put that in util here. And this is what it looks like to create calculator instructions. So we pass in those two numbers. And then as you can see here, we've got this buffer layout class that's going to be used to create a struct. Now, what is this thing? Well, basically what this does is it, well, first of all, it's provided by Solana. It's actually part of this Solana buffer layout package here. And I stuck it in the readme. It's pretty important here. You're going to need to install this and you're also going to need to install buffer. So buffer is an NPM package. And then this is also an NPM package, but from Solana buffer layout, and this is the command to install them. So make sure you do that. It'll add it to your package JSON. You can see I've got it right here. Solana buffer layout and buffer. And that's what you can use to actually create the layout. And now what does the layout do? Well, this really just does a similar operation to what that map does. You know, you saw when we were doing like a mapping with our client back here. Um, let's take this someone, for example. It's pretty similar to this. It really just takes an object and maps it into bytes so that it's understandable, digestible by for serialization. So in this case, we're basically using this U32 function here to create a byte representation of a U32 field called operation and then another one called operating value, which again is exactly what we got here. So I know that might be a little confusing, but all you really got to think about is this function here is designed to convert what you're expecting as the instruction struct into bytes so that the network can understand it. And it goes in that BPF format. So once we've created this layout, this schema, essentially, we can allocate the size, we can encode it, and then we just return the buffer itself. And that sets up our program's instructions. Now, once we do that, we of course have this little like string conversion here too. It's not really a huge deal. Um, I just have this little like method here I define where you can plug in those values and it'll kick you back these strings for our output. No big deal. Um, 
But yeah, so everything else looks pretty straightforward. But as you can see here where we have data, we've actually replaced that no instruction data, like the allocate zeros, to finally have these instructions here. And it's just that result, that buffer from that function there. And now we're going to be able to actually pass real instructions here. So we've got this all set up. The last thing we need to do is add a trigger. So the trigger is going to look pretty similar to what we worked with before. I'm going to grab sum.ts. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to put it into the client. And I'm going to rename it to calculator TS. And then I'm actually going to change all this math stuff into calculator. And so as you can see, this looks pretty much exactly the same. We've just gone ahead and renamed it to calculator to match our new model. And also we've changed this field to be value instead of sum. So it matches our struct that we're going to be using here. Um, not this one, but this one right here. Um, so it's going to match our account struct. So just like before, when this was expecting the math sum, now it's expecting calculator. So just like we did in the last video. And then we send it. And we're going to finally change sum to calculator. Oops, not all caps. So that we're going to be running the calculator program. And that, my friends, is all it's going to take. And I added these little um, like comments here just so you know. Like This is the account data up here. And then down below here is main. And now we're going to kick this thing off. All right, so this thing finished up. And as you can see, our program's been deployed. And there's the ID right there. So I'm just going to copy that over into this grep command. So we're going to be able to see the logs. Kick it off. And just for reference, I stuck this down here as our example here. So we're going to add four, subtract one, and then multiply by two. So we'll see that in all the logs. So let's do npm run example. Because we got that set up to run calculator TS. And as you can see, there's our output. It creates that account. And now that account's going to be brand new, so fresh data. There you go. So starting at zero, we add four, value is now four. And maybe I should have put something to represent it starts at zero, but you add four, it gets to four. Subtract one, it's gonna go down to three, right? And then we multiply it by two, and of course that makes it six. So you can see it's working. And now let's have a little fun. Let's go in and change that like we did in the last video. And let's go to like test seven or something. And let's run it again. So creating account for test seven. And there we go. We're hitting it now. And there's those logs right there. Sometimes they take a sec. But again, same thing. Starts at four, gets to three, goes to six. And I mean, of course, you know what's going to happen if we do it again with the same thing. We'll just do test seven again. And as you can see, obviously, it did exactly what we expected it to do. And that is really it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you pass program instructions into a program on Solana and dictate its behavior using your account and using your client. So pretty interesting. Stay tuned for the next one.